Hi, I'm William Mack, Senior Applications Engineer at the Kemet Applications Intelligence Center. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we characterize our KC link capacitors to determine their ripple current rating, ESR, and ESL. Of course, I can't give away all our secrets because the competition might be watching, but I think we're safe. So we're going to take a virtual trip to our lab in South Carolina. But first, why should you care about ripple current? In power supply circuits, capacitors can be subject to very large AC currents. This AC current causes the capacitor to heat up, and the higher the ESR of the capacitor, the more heat it will generate. If the capacitor gets too hot, it can degrade performance and lead to premature failure, and nobody likes failure. So we characterize our capacitors and give you the data to make sure you don't fail. All right, now let's head to South Carolina. So here we have a setup that lets us generate very high AC currents between a few tens of kilohertz to roughly one megahertz and measure the self-heating to acquire the ripple current rating for our KC link capacitors. To do this, we use a resonant tank circuit. And to generate the high current levels we're looking for, we have this really big coil, or RBC for short. This RBC allows us to resonate with the capacitor under test at the desired frequency, creating very large AC voltages. The plastic enclosure is there to make sure our test engineers don't have any shocking experiences. This is how our setup works. First, we generate a sine wave at the desired frequency and feed it into a power amplifier that is connected to the input of the RBC. And the output of the RBC is connected to the capacitor under test. The output of the RBC is carefully adjusted to get the inductance we want. And the input is placed in relation to the output so the power amplifier can properly feed the RBC and avoid all those pesky reflections that we don't like. But we won't get into that here. The capacitor is mounted to an FR4 substrate with high voltage oscilloscope probes and thermocouples, we can use that to monitor the capacitor's voltage and temperature. With everything connected, we ramp the voltage on our signal generator until we get to the target AC current amplitude. Then we sit back and record the temperature rise and repeat the process with ripple currents at different frequencies. We can also turn the heat up in the lab and perform this measurement with ambient temperatures up to 125 degrees Celsius and we can bias the capacitor so we can test at different operating voltages. This setup lets us generate ripple currents up to 50 amps RMS, which is enough to get things really hot, like really hot. As an example, I want to share some data from when we ran our new KC link capacitors through this test. These capacitors are rated for operation at up to 150 degrees Celsius, which includes ambient plus self-heating. They're designed for use in systems that use wide band gap semiconductors, so we expect them to operate in high ambient temperatures. You can see the results here. Now, what about ESR? It's important to know ESR because it is a critical factor in determining how much power will be dissipated by the capacitor. Lower ESR is better because it reduces self-heating and helps improve the overall efficiency of power converters. For example, when applying AC current to a capacitor, self-heating will occur due to I squared R losses. Capacitors with higher ESR such as class II ceramic capacitors will have more self-heating compared to capacitors with lower ESR, such as class I's. When characterizing capacitors like KC Link, its very low losses make it a big challenge for measuring ESR with precision and accuracy. Kemet utilizes state-of-the-art impedance analyzers with customized four-wire Kelvin fixtures to measure ESR levels in the low milliohm range with precision and accuracy. That's critical for optimizing designs. Prior to characterizing the capacitors, we calibrate and compensate our test setup to remove the parasitic effects from the measurement, leaving us with just the response of the capacitor. Once this is all done, we let the analyzer do its thing. We get graphs of impedance and ESR versus frequency. It looks neat, but what does it mean? In the case of our KC Link series, you can see that we measure ESR under 4 milliohms. When you pair the high ripple current capability with low ESR, you get a capacitor that lets you design power converters that leverage fast switching wide band gap semiconductors and operate at higher voltages, temperatures, and frequencies to deliver higher efficiency and higher power density. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay curious.